Okay, so we got 140 minutes in the uh, pressure cooker. Before I unwrap them, I'm using my sealer to seal them. Uh, it put a really nice seal on and I've alcoholed everything and prepared some uh, pink oyster. Um, uh, pink Oyster uh, LS. It's inoculate the world.com. Um, and I have um, some bags that I have done. These are exploratory and a tester. Um, I use the heat resistant um, silicone that you see, and it stuck really well here with no problem. But where I added it under and on top, for the filter, which is a piece of a M90 uh, face mask, or M95, excuse me, it did not stick well. And so I had to go, it's after the pressuring process, no, even before the pressuring process, it began to lift up because these bags are really slick. And so I used micropore tape around the edges, and I think next time I'll just use micropore tape to adhere the filter to the plastic. Taking off the needle, putting it into the flame until it turns a nice red color. All right, letting it cool down. I'm gonna put one cc in these. and it goes, that cool. I'm going to do the same thing. I really should have put my injectable ports in a different locale. I'm going to maybe possibly repeat myself a little bit. Alright, so we gave these a good alcoholing. And... Um, I made these myself. Um, this is a piece of an M90 mask, and I tried using the the red silicone, but even before it went into the pressure cooker, because these bags, hear them? They're extra slick. Um, it came off, or it began to come off. So I taped it down with micropore tape afterwards so that's what the red is inside and this is hardwood chips that have been made into sawdust and this is pinto beans and white rice because that's all I could get in my area whenever I needed it no popcorn no brown rice I have also used some black beans and brown rice but the black might have been a bad idea. Anyway, so I don't think any of this is a contamination. That's the beans, you know, and this is some uncolonized rice. And uh, you can see where now it's going up into the sawdust. Um, here, uh, this one here, uh, just did a little bit better, and it appears that all of the rice and beans are colonized. So, I thought that I would try to break this one up some. So, first thing I'm doing is pulling in some air. <laughs>
okay it does appear that I have gotten a small hole right here during my breakup so let me get tape and of course that is not good And it was probably me not being careful enough. So we'll just make sure there. All, right, all air is supposed to go through this wonderful filter. But this is an experiment. And pink oyster mushroom mycelium is extremely obsidious. And it's very hard very hard to mess up so we'll hope for the best there so now we'll let this one colonize so this was liquid culture of pink oyster mushrooms that was done on 227 and today is 3 23 i believe so it we're almost a month and we're doing our first break and shake or our only break and shake until it's time for these to be colonized uh, to grow and I'm gonna leave this one until all of the rice is colonated colonized I, I don't want to mess this up and I think on the next one I'm gonna open it up and try to get the this to come down a little bit away from here and then break and shake and the same thing here we have some rice and beans. This was the slowest one, I think, that have not colonized yet. So we're going to wait on those. All right. So that's an update on our grow bags. I have put filters in my tub. And I got this idea. And so I thought I'd just run with it. Uh, so... We'll lightly miss the inside of it with alcohol and give it a little wipe down. I could go get a bigger tub, but I just wasn't sure what's going to end up happening with this. And so I decided to, to go with something small for the moment. Um, I have another piece to it. Uh, it's another tub just like it. I'm going to alcohol it and, and wipe it out as well. Alright, and then I'm going to take and put the two together and see how packaging tape does. Duct tape will be better if I end up liking this. So I've sort of made a, a makeshift hinge. I don't know how well it'll hold up. I've seen some people that were growing mushrooms in tubs that did this so we'll see all right so now we have our proverbial cage <laughs> And, uh, well, besides the remote control, <laughs> we have uh, three our three uh, tester uh, fruiting blocks uh, that we've been working on. And this one was broken up first because it was the quickest to get colonized on the, gr on the grains. And you just saw that. It's been a week, I guess, for me. And we've got babies in there. So that means it's time to go. And so, I've been plotting 
what to do. These two have just started producing the pink, which is when I think you're supposed to fruit them. And the other one's doing the same. We just started getting the pink. So, I thought, let's think about what to do with these. So, these two here, I decided that since we don't have a Pacific um, babies popping up, that I might just try cutting the top clear off. And just open it up a little bit and uh, just keep trimming it. And I know for the speed of TV <laughs> or for YouTube, I've got to hurry. But I thought that that's what I'd do. Because they're already sort of fruiting towards the fresh air of the filter. And they do say if you give them too big of a hole that they'll grow too many mushrooms and then the substrate can't maintain them. But this is a fresh block and they do seem to have their babies at the top and nothing's really going at the bottom. And the big deal is the fresh air. And so I thought... And you could do this with a rubber band. But I thought I'll just pull some tension with some tape to keep possibly them from fruiting down here. So I'm, I pulled the plastic up tight. It might not work. Because the cake will reduce. So now we can put the cake in here. And there's a possibility. Maybe it'll just fruit straight up. And so. I'm going to try that again. I might do it different this time. I might have better luck with tension. And that'll keep the fresh air, maybe, from uh, causing babies to try to fruit from the sides. And maybe we'll just get our babies from the top. Let me get my mess out of the way. But this one here is another story. We've got babies here. We've got babies up there we've got already existing babies uh ready to go see so i gotta be much more careful but i think i'm gonna still try the same thing i'm gonna try to get low and not damage these babies Let me 
get in below this little spot. And we put these in here on 227. And today is March the 30th. Look at those gorgeous babies. I've got a jump start there. Look at that. I have seen a man who seemed quite upset that somebody was letting theirs fruit this much. He felt like you should only give them one small little place to fruit from. And then, because the substrate could not handle this many babies, maybe, at one time. And then, of course, they're all going to be all poking up around each other, crowding each other. We'll see. Let's try doing the same thing. We'll try to cord off the air. I'm losing a few little kernels that fell off because of my scissors. My scissors hit them right there. That looks pretty fine, pretty wild and wonderful right there. All right, so now every day, and we may have to go bigger once they get going, but for now, this will be a good start. And they can get tall to see the tub goes up, but they may just spread out impossibly. And so I've got one of those fancy misters. And so, I'm going to miss the inside of the tub, and twice a day, every day, and I'm going to go ahead and lightly mist even the bottom right now, and the tops of the cake. But it's got good moisture, though, but I'm just going to give it a good hosing down. And every day, I'm going to fan these and mist them twice a day. And... And all I gotta do is just uh, take the little lid down and, and we sort of have our aquarium, as it were. So, and uh, it's sitting pretty good. It looks good. We, we got a little hairline crack right there, but it's pretty good. So, uh, you could even put something heavy on the top and uh, no crack and uh, we got nice filters so let's see how that goes Woo! homemade grow bags are kicking it so we put the pink oysters in this humidity dome it's like crazy. Look at that. They are really loving it. I'm misting directly onto the babies and misting the dome after fanning three times a day. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Grow bags do seem to be winning the challenge. Got a lizard <laughs> humidifier at a bin store. It had a piece missing, so I had to work to put it together. But it was seven bucks compared to forty, so that's good. And uh, I wanted to show you. It's really nice in here. So let me turn it off for a minute. And uh, let's look at our grow bags. This was the one that was the last to go to pin. And there's the first one. The oysters are really being pale. Uh, you know, they're pink and then they're paling up. So I don't know if that means... They've 
needing something, so I'm going to try to find it out. Um, so, but they look really great. I think they're doing okay, and it's just part of the normal process, but that's our grow bags. Eventually, I'm going to have to space these out, I think, and there's a possibility they may fall over, and I'm going to have to balance them, but I'll be doing video updates from here on out, so this will be the last clip on this video, and then I'll do uh, little updates from there.